you, Mike. Please take your Bible with me now and turn to the book of James in chapter number 1, if you would. James chapter number 1. We're just so glad to see you this morning. Several faces that uh, are with us this morning, the visitors, and we appreciate you being here. And I hope when you leave that uh, you'll pray for us and then just say, I believe I'll go back to church there again. We'd love to have you. We'd love to see you. Amen. James chapter 1, we're going to read, if you would please, the verse four, first four verses. And the Bible says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I want to preach on that little phrase in there, count it all joy. Amen. That's just, that's just a, a, a choice phrase. Just count it all joy. I, uh, I wish somebody put that on a bumper sticker. Just count it all joy. Now, you've got to be careful about bumper stickers, okay? I heard this pastor drove his wife's car one day. His was out of commission, drove his wife's car. And as he was going through town, this lady was following him, and he pulled up to a red light. When he stopped, she blew the horn. Honk, honk. Aggravated him a little bit, but uh, no big deal. Pulled up to the next light. Honk, honk. He looked around. Pulled up to the next light. Honk, honk. He got out and walked back there. He said, lady, what's your problem? You're getting on my nerves. I've had enough of this. Why are you doing that? She said, well, you got a bumper sticker that says honk if you love Jesus. Oh, okay, yeah, right, I knew that, okay. <laughs> Count it all joy. That's simply saying all things that come into your life, just mark it up to hallelujah anyhow. Amen. Just count it all joy. Now, it doesn't say count it all joy when you get a raise. You don't have to have any preaching to do that. Doesn't say count it all joy when you get that promotion. Oh, we're we're full of ourselves then. But it says when these circumstances come, and he's given them to us in the previous verse. Don't get bitter. Don't get discouraged. Just count it all joy. I'm going to look at five scriptures this morning, beginning in this one of situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in, all of us do, and yet the Lord says, don't react according to your flesh. React spiritually and just count it all joy. And, and you, need, you know what? If you'll determine that this morning, if you, now don't wait till you have that bumper banger to try to get spiritual. Don't wait till think, no, just get a mindset. May the Lord just take this message this morning and help us get a mindset. Lord, whatever it is, I'm just going to count it all joy and, and let that be my attitude, let that be my mentality. It can, it can take care of your ulcers, amen. amen. It can take care of your marital problems, amen. There's a whole lot of things could change about us when we just decide instead of complaining, I'm just going to rejoice. Count it all joy. First of all, when trials come your way, look at verse number two. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials, knowing this. Now, you're not a mental case when you, when you count it all joy. You do it because there's some things that you know. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
but let patience have her perfect work. This is what he's trying to accomplish in our life, that ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Okay? What he's saying here is this, that trials are going to come into your life, and it's coming to mature, to complete, to make you who you should be. That's what he's trying to accomplish with it. The other day, this was illustrated to me. I've been thinking about these verses. and I came to church on a Saturday morning and they brought the uh, blow-ups out there in the field for the children. We had to picnic and there was four blow-ups out there. And they'd already arrived and they'd been set off the truck and uh, uh, they, they were laying there on the ground, uh, freshly unrolled, laying there. They didn't have any shape. They didn't have any form. They didn't have any usefulness whatsoever. But when you start that generator and hook that fan up, you begin to watch them, and they just begin. It's kind of creepy. You see them just kind of begin to fill up. And pretty soon the different segments pop out and pop up and boom. And you look and you say, now I see what it is. Why? Because it has come to maturity. It has been filled up. All the lacking in it has been filled up. And what the Lord here is saying here is this. You're not going to be what you're supposed to be. You're not going to be what I want you to be. You're going to be lacking. You're going to be immature until the trials of this life work in you to produce a maturity that nothing else will. And after a while, you become the child of God God wants you to be. Look, look at what it says there, if you would, at the end of verse 4 that you may be perfect, that means complete, mature, entire, complete, not lacking anything. Have you ever seen someone that had seemingly good personality? They, they were gracious and, and you were around them considerably and the longer you're around them, you notice something's missing. Well, it's just, I don't know. They're nice people. I like them all. And after a while, you begin to analyze and you say, it's evident these people have never gone through a hard time in their life. You know, by, by their attitude and everything, you can just tell. Now, I haven't found that in you. you know, I know you had not found But sometimes you just say, there's no seasoning there. You know what I mean? There's no depth there. There's no wisdom there that comes from going through trials. That's why the Bible says, don't put a novice in responsibility in the church. Why? Because he's not complete. He doesn't have what trials and hardships is going to put into him. And until he has that, he don't need to be in leadership leading people because there's just something missing in his life. Can I say this? When trials come, God is working in your life. He's bringing you to the place that he can use you. You're not a novice. You're not a greenhorn. You're not wet behind the ears, all those terms. You've gone through some things that have strengthened you. You've gone through some things that have toughened you. And now the Bible says you're complete. You're whole, lacking nothing. So if you're going through a trial today, Get you a bumper sticker that says honk no. Get you a bumper sticker that says count it all joy. Amen. Just hallelujah anyhow. 
If you're going through a trial, God's working in your life. The second thing I'll mention is this. Now, we're not crazy about this. When you're going through correction, count it all joy. Well, preacher, I just don't like it. You know, uh, things have happened in my life, and, and I know God has taken me to the woodshed, and I, I, I'm just getting fed up with it. Well, can I tell you something? You're not going to whip God. So you just as well take it, amen, and learn from it and get from it what God wants you to have. Listen to what the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. In other words, don't get mad. God isn't hurting you. God's helping you. He, whom he loveth, he chasteneth. And the Bible says he scourges every son whom he receives. Now, I'm going to tell you this. <coughs> if God corrects you in your life, He chastens you. Even if it comes to the point He has to scourge. Now, there's a difference. And I've told you this before. But chastening is child training. Yeah. That's what chastening is. Now, it may be with a little switch. And Oh, I said something awful there, didn't I? <laughs> Well, what about a big switch? That'll work, that'll work just as good. But have you ever had a child and you, you're going somewhere and, and the child wants to wander off here in, in a bad direction and you say, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. And you correct it and it comes over here. And a little while later it wanders and you say, no, no, don't go over there, walk right here. You know what you're doing? You're chastening the child. You're training the child. That when I go over here, it's not good. I feel something. So I'm going to walk here. When I go over here, I, that's not good. The, 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 the gain don't outweigh the pain. And so I'm going to walk where I'm supposed to walk. That's chastening. Now sometimes that doesn't work. Can your parents say amen right there? <laughs> sometimes it just don't work. Sometimes the child says, I'm tough. <laughs> Just give it your best shot. Mm -mm, that's not a good thing to say. I did that one time. <laughs> and God doesn't chasten. He doesn't train. He picks us up and... <laughs> God wouldn't do that. My God does. As a matter of fact, he says... If you're without chastening, if you're, if you're never scourged, you're not God's child. Amen. So what does it do? When I'm chastened of the Lord, just count it all joy. Why? Because I'm not an orphan. Amen. Thank God for that. I've got a Father in heaven that cares. And I've got a Father in heaven that cares enough to where I'm not going to get by with much. Amen. He's watching. He's watching. How many of you have ever gone out to eat and there's been some child in there wreaking havoc over the restaurant? Amen. I mean, you know, this, this, this fella is just making everybody's experience miserable. Now, if the parent has to deal with that, and, and are you listening? A good parent's going to deal with that. Yeah. Amen. Well, so preacher, where are you going on this? You just listen. This is good preaching. Yeah. A good parent's going to deal with that. Now, if, if a, a parent comes over and picks a child up and says, let's go to the bathroom. I'm not calling child services on him. I'm going to say hallelujah <laughs> and try to eat before he gets out of the bathroom. Amen. <laughs> We got non-smoking sections. Sometimes I wish we had a bad parent section where they're not allowed in there. That's a good idea. Yeah. Man. But I, I'm, I'm glad that, that parent's saying, I can't let this go on with no attention. Maybe. And you know what God says? I'm not going to let you embarrass me. I'm not going to let this go without attention. Good. Now, can I say, sometimes you don't have a good parent. 
and they just let them tear the house down. Two things going on there. First of all, you're training an outlaw that has no respect for people or, or in it. You're trained. And second of all, you're saying, I'm not a good parent. Well, can I tell you, God's a good parent. Amen. Amen. He just, he watches us. He gets, and what does it say there? For whom the Lord loveth, yeah. he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. Amen. I'm glad that I can read that and say, well, that's one, I, I'm one of those. So when he corrects you, count it all joy. Yeah. Hey. Count it all joy. Say, thank God. Thirdly, when persecutions come. Now this is a different category altogether. When people mistreat you, when people mock you, criticize you, you know what we want to do? We want to be like James and John and just pray fire down out of heaven and kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> but God said, no, 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 we don't do that. Or we go into our pity party. I'd have got that raised, but that, that boss knows I'm a Christian and he's, he's mean, he hates Christians. And Well, I can't say that's not true. That happens. Amen. Amen. That happens. You've got a Christian testimony. Sometimes your supervision don't appreciate that. And so that bleeds through that relationship. But listen, blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12, first word, rejoice. Be exceedingly glad for great is your reward, reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. That's Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. What does that mean? That means count it all joy yeah. when this happens. Now there's two blessings that come with this. And they're listed right here. First of all, great is your reward in heaven. Yeah. God will take care of that. God will take care of that. And when we have great uh, anticipation and we look forward to our heavenly reward, what you ought to do when that foreman speaks ill of you, writes you up a bad report you didn't deserve, criticizes you, looks over you for the, for the uh, 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 promotion, uh, gives you every rotten assignment that comes into the plant. You know what you need to do? Thank you, brother. You just put another crown, a uh, star in my crown. Amen. Just count it all joy. Amen. You say, preacher, that's not humanly possible. No, but it's spiritually possible. Amen. It's spiritually possible. And you know what? That foreman, you, you're the foreman now, all right? Yeah. You got promoted right there, didn't you? <laughs> and you, you say, no problem. I'll do what you say. No problem. No. And you just, my reward is building in heaven. You know what he's going to do? Well, I don't want him to have a good reward, so I'm going to start being nice to him. <laughs> Maybe that'll happen. You don't. <laughs> Your reward in heaven. Look at the second thing that this, this persecution provides. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You know what it does? It puts you in good company. Amen. Amen. It puts you in good company. I had rather be in the crowd, amen, that's persecuted than in the crowd that is protected and never suffers with Christ. You see, but preacher, sometimes it can get really bad. Oh, I know that. I'm not minimizing it. If it was, if it was a fictitious thing, the Lord wouldn't be writing about it. Yeah. But he writes in here and says, hey, you're going to be, what did he say there? Uh, all manner of evil against you falsely, uh, persecute you, revile you, mistreat you. All that's real. But he said, they did the same thing to the prophets before you. 
isn't there a song that says something to the effect, am I going to sail through life on flowery beds of ease when others have been persecuted and hurt and harmed? I, my name, I'd rather have my name with them than with those who compromised, with those who did whatever it took to blend in, those who did whatever it took to be a men pleaser. No, just take the guff. Great is your reward in heaven, and you're in good company when you do that. Amen. The fourth thing I've written down, when want comes your way, when want comes your way. Turn with me in your Bible to Philippians chapter number four, if you would. Because we, we need to read this. It's so relative today. Philippians chapter four. Now I said when want comes your way, when you are lacking, when you don't have what you feel like you need and you certainly don't have what you want, when you have to do without. Let's, let's read beginning in verse number 10, Philippians 4. But I rejoice, there's the word, count it all joy. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last at the end of my life, your financial care of me hath flourished again. You're supporting me. And I appreciate it, he says. Wherein you were also careful. You always wanted to, but you lacked opportunity. You just couldn't. Now that I speak in, in, in I'm sorry, not that I speak in, Respect of want. He said, I'm not saying this because I'm lacking. I'm not saying this because things are lean and I, I, I'm lacking in things I need. He says, that's not where this is coming from. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Are you listening, folks? When you go through times of need, you're going to learn things you're not going to learn anywhere else. Yeah. Paul said, I, I, I'm not talking about my needful condition because my needful condition has taught me some things. He says, I have learned both how to uh, be abased and, and how to be abound. I know how to be full. I know how to be hungry. And in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. Paul says, you know, it's, it's kind of like a roller coaster. Things are going great, and then things are not going so great. And then things pick up, and then things get worse. And he said, you know what I've learned how to do? I've learned how to flourish in both times. Yeah. I've learned how to do without and without it making me bitter, without it making me critical, I've learned how to flourish without it making me spoiled. He says, I've done that. And then he writes that famous verse, for I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Now, people have misused that verse and said, well, you know what Paul is saying? Man, I can, I can uh, defeat lions and I can defeat bears and I can jump tall buildings in a single bound, stop a speeding bull. No, that doesn't say you're Superman. What it says is, whatever comes down life's road, you can take care of it. Yeah. And through whatever comes into you, you can say, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Now, let me take just a moment and talk to parents. Don't look at me, don't raise your hand, and don't cross your eyes and shake your head. But I wonder how many of us break our necks to make sure our kids have more than we have. How many of us sacrifice to make sure our kids are not neglected, maybe like we were. 
don't have to go through these hard times. I don't want my kids to ever have to. And yet, those times of need put into you a character that if they never experience that, they're not going to know. We look back and we say, boy, I'm glad for that time that there wasn't enough lunch money there and we had to go through the couch, amen. And, and uh, Anybody else know what I'm talking about? I'm glad for those days when we had to pray and say, God, <laughs> that's nothing in the refrigerator. I'm so glad that we went through that and it, causes us to believe and trust in God and yet we will not dare let our children go through that. You know what I say when my kids come? God bless you. Be you warmed and filled. Get out of here. <laughs> no, I, what I say when my children come is, can I borrow $10? But then you think we <laughs> could work that out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. When, when tough times come, just count it all joy. You know what we need to say is, I wonder how God's going to fix this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I wonder what God's going to do now. Yeah. My soul, over the years, he's, he's just blessed and provided. Looking back over my life, there's times when money comes in and you don't even know where it came from. Amen. I mean, it's just hallelujah. Good time. And then somehow the spigot gets turned off. And you say, man, this is not so much fun. But you know what? God loves you just as much when the spigot's off as when it's flowing. And you be faithful to God and do what's right. And, and just... You know, I, I've told you this little old stupid thing before, but I told Carolyn one time, I said, if we starve to death, amen, you tell people I had a heart attack. Don't you tell them we starved to death, 